Just a quick video before I put this project away onto a shelf where hopefully it won't disappear for when I need it next time. But what this is, is a power supply that I used for ham radio. And I thought, why not make a quick video because it might inspire someone else as a very inexpensive way to get yourself a, a mains base station power supply. The usual warnings, if you're not familiar with how to safely work with mains electricity and wiring and have any doubts whatsoever, don't do this. Uh, playing around with mains electricity is dangerous. Okay, let's move on. The power supply itself is actually this silver box. Um, it's a switching power supply. I call these things Meanwell power supplies. Meanwell is actually the brand name. There's a lot of knockoffs. And uh, from the side, you can see how thick it is. Um, I guess while I'm on the side there, you can see there's a switch for either 115 or 220 volts. I use this for 115. I would say pay a little extra for the Meanwell brand name because they have a reputation for not causing as many RFI problems as some of the cheaper knockoffs in this sort of style. You can definitely get these cheaper than Meanwell, but uh, there's a little bit better reputation for quality, and especially for the RFI issue, because the last thing you want is a power supply kicking off all kinds of RFI when you're trying to use it for ham radio. Okay, so let's zoom in on the, the model number. The LRS 350-12 and notice that for output 12 volts 29 amps now there is a screw um, over by the green LED it's a white plastic screw and you can adjust that for uh, more or less voltage um, probably about 2 volts either way uh, but either way, I was able to turn it and get it up to 13, what I do, 13.6 or 13.8 volts, something like that. So that's where a lot of ham radio um, transceivers like to be. Okay, so you get yourself one of these, roughly about $35 on Amazon. I checked the other day, they're still about the same price. So it goes up and down, but... 35 bucks you've got sort of the the main um, power supply but you've got you don't have your connections so for eight dollars I got a two pack of these which is just a plug and I already had a, a cord but any cord properly rated gauge will work right in the center there's a uh, fuse, and I pulled it out and checked it. It's a glass fuse. Uh, it's hard to read a little bit. I couldn't tell if it was a 15 or 20 amp fuse. I guess it's 15. And the switch, and it's a nice little switch. Um, it takes a little bit of force to uh, flick it, which is good, so it won't accidentally switch on or won't accidentally switch off. So I like that. Um, using CAD, I like free CAD. I just uh, whipped up some very utilitarian mount plates, if you will, um, one on each side of this plastic dollar store Tupper, Tupperware that I had lying around, and then just zip tied it into place, and it's on there nice and firm. It came with the wiring, and all the wiring is spaded, so if you want to swap it out for a heavier gauge wire or whatever you want to do, um, you can do that. And then it just wires up. Here's your inputs into the power supply. And the nice thing about the switch, it doesn't include um, the ground bonding neutral so that um, your, your case ends up being grounded as well, which is nice. And I confirmed that with the multimeter. The uh, output power here, which I just simply send to you power pole output here and then I just plug my radio into that so I won't get into the specifics about 
amp draw of a particular radio, you just need to understand, okay, this is the amperage that this power supply and this switch can handle. And you look up online or in your manual for your radio, the uh, amps that it's going to pull. And I did a few other tests as well, keyed down full output into a dummy load to confirm the output or the amp draw and um, made sure everything was up to spec. And I ended up using this for about four hours um, and none of the wiring, it was still room temperature. So it, it, it was fine for my purpose. So again, $35, about eight bucks for a couple of these switches. Maybe you can get just one switch for less and a bunch of wiring. Hopefully you've got some power pull connectors around. So there's no reason you can't put together this whole thing for less than 50 bucks. And you're saying, well, it doesn't have a voltage meter or an amperage meter. Okay, well, <laughs> there's my solution. I happen to have one of these lying around. Um, so I just put this um, in series and that tells me what I'm drawing and um, you know confirms that the voltage is okay and the amperage draw looks fine and all that. So there you go. And for those of you that have seen other channels that do um, battery box builds, you can use a lot of the same stuff for that. Just remember, you're hooking all that up to your 12-volt um, your output there. Uh, I, I suppose if you wanted to, there's no reason why if you wanted instrumentation regarding what you're drawing from the mains, you, you could put a separate meter on there or maybe... Maybe some meters that, that will do both. Uh, who knows if you really need all that. But I don't think you do um, because most radios will tell you uh, the voltage that they're seeing on some screen. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need. Um, and this will get you going. I don't see any reason why this couldn't be used for a simple uh, base station. Especially, you know, let's say UHF, VHF, 50 watts. Uh, why not? Or I was using it for 100 watt. I was using it with the ICOM uh, 7100, and it was fine. So you could do that. Uh, and the great thing about doing it in this kind of uh, Tupperware, the the styrofoam, by the way, is just to keep keep this from sliding around. Um, the great thing about using a Tupperware bin like this, um, I can put my meter and the cord right in there. Put the lid on. There you go. Now, one thing to keep in mind, there is a fan, so heat does need to dissipate, so you may want to cut some holes in the lid. Um, the other thing I was thinking of doing, um, in case I do want to use this, let's say, outside here in Florida on a porch, where it might be warm outside, so even with uh, airflow, it still might be warm to help the airflow, uh, maybe getting some 12-volt fans, some cheap 12-volt fans, and just, again... Um, uh, leach off of that 12 volt power supply to get more airflow. I don't know. I'm not going to bother for now um, All you really need to do probably is just not snap the lid so tight. Just give it a little room to to breathe while you're while you're operating and uh, that's it. So again, if, if uh, cash is tight and looking at a 150 dollar power supply, you're wondering is that really necessary? Nah, it's not. Is this pretty? No, it's not. But it'll get the job done. Again, if you know what you're doing, be safe. And if you're not sure about how to work with mains electricity, don't do it or find somebody that does. All right, 73s.